So along with the oh, oh my god sorry So along with the last class, <coughs> so now we are going to chapter three. So chapter three is about integrated complex function with dynamics feedback. In previous chapter, we described the cell as a robust machine that carries out complex functions through the activity of distinct function modules. At the next level, it is important to understand how the cell accomplishes this complex function by coordinating the activity of the multiple functional modules. Only a basic understanding of mechanism is required to raise and lower the window. However, to be able to repair a car window, the mechanism must be understood in much greater detail. Here, a complete list of the parts right down to the screw that hold them in place may be required. The task of repairing the mechanism is made more complicated when parts differ between car brand even though they have similar roles in the overall function. An even greater understanding is reached by looking inside the motors that drive the mechanism and dissecting each element of each part. So here the author, they describe like the, like the car, when you have different brand car, they have same mechanism, but in detail they change. So like this context, you try to understand how the cell behave. So, how to approach a complex function? Understanding how a complex function is carried out generally starts with knowing the goal of the function and the context in which it will be performed, which can be described by the dependent variables, variable required. Let's say you have class for independent endocytosis. This is your case. So you want, you want to how they understand. How, how they behave, you want to know. So what is the purpose of this cross-ring dependent endocytosis? Purpose is bring membrane and external material into the cell, okay? And that is their purpose. And then what is their dependent variables? They are ATP dependent, they need lipid, PIP2, availability of cholesterol, actin, and other protein. They are involved. Okay. And condition is uh, well, when and how they behave. This phenomenon is repeated, repeatedly performed in the cell, and then this is also dynamic, not the one final outcome. Okay. And then under these four things, so you can make some strategy. Strategy means normally reverse engineering remove compartment component let's say you have apple cell phone so you are you are the competitive company who have to make the apple phone but what is their first strategy to make it when they when when they are released in the market immediately buy that phone and then how can i say oh you can make them as a single component and then see how they compartment it and how they function well. And then after thinking of how they look and then you have to make it similar manner but in another platform, okay? So let's imagine this, this is your cell also, and then when you want to know a certain mechanism and then you have to first initial strategy is reverse engineering which is called reverse engineering, decompartmentate every component. So using sRNA, RNA, or shRNA study, you remove one by one. And then you can know this possible dependent variable, they are really important or not, you, you can know it. Okay? So for example, you remove lipid, and let's see how closely and dependent cytosis happen. When that doesn't happen, lipid is involved. When you, leave, when you remove PIP2 pathway, remove it using inhibitor, and then can confirm this is involved or not, okay? But sometimes, 
even you block something, they always still have some alternative pathway to activate them. So it's not 100% sure. But in anyhow, you can say something about this reverse engineering method. So even though you can meet the very complex function of the cell, and even certain phenomenon, the first strategy is reverse engineering. Please remember this. Okay, and then let's see the clustering mediated endocytosis. They show like that. Most complex cellular function results from the sequential comple completion of different steps, which usually are linked to the specific functional module. Figure show that endocytosis is broken down into seven steps. These steps are somewhat arbitrary and do not refer directly to distinct protein binding event or modification. Thus, we need more detailed understanding. The level of understanding would also engage one to engineer a repair of endocytosis or enhancement that could help when the process is intimate in this stage. So why people want to understand the, these steps? Actually, this step is people divided. But in the cell, they didn't divide. This is their sequencer. But for understanding from us, we are dividing them. Okay, here, seven steps. But this very continuous step, so actually the real, how many steps are there, we are not sure about. If we found very high resolution confocal, high resolution or something, and then we can make more, many steps, right? This is true. And then why we want to understand these steps? Because after understanding this, if something did it happen because of some malfunction of this one of the steps, and then we can cure it, we can repair it, okay? So as an engineering point of view, we always try to understand how many steps are there, how they're regulated, and then first step, second step, how they are linking together. And this is the making in complex function. So all of the module and step, they are linking together. So link function are defined here as those where the performance of one function is linked to the other activation. Which means, let's say, first step, early code. Next step is intermediate code. After early code, intermediate coding can happen. Without early code, intermediate coding doesn't happen. This is so called sequential manner, right? So always from the cell, uh, they have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, this is a sequential phenomenon. So how they know from A to B? After accomplishing A step, the cell, they can go through step B, okay? It's this very natural thing. But, and then we can call it as a decision making. How the cell want to know they can go through this pathway or not? From the initial A step, when they complete, and then check, this is good, and then they can go next B. This is the same happen when you make the car. From the, B, from the bottom side or top side, after step by quality control checking, and then you can go next level, right? So this is how the cell also checking their original function. An integrated complex function, okay? So let's, we, we, we can observe this initial stage of the glycoprotein production. So free liposome here, mRNA there, translate to the protein, okay? And then now secret protein that can pro provide here. So the so compart compartment, let's say uh, this ER membrane, ER cytoplasm, and free liposome sub subunit, they are integrating each other. Even though they are singly compartmented, but some, some other function, they are interplaying each other, okay? So here, they mentioned they want to focus on how they are integrating each other for having complex function. For example, why cell make like this? Let's say you have 10, you need 10 function, but if we want to make 10 protein, for revealing this 10 function, this is very inefficient, right? But if you have three protein, but from the combination, A, B, C, A, B, B, C, A, C, A, B, C, you can have many function. So that is why the cell have single component, 
less number, but from their combination, combinatory effect, they can have they can maximize the complex function. Okay. So this is their uh, original concept, how, how they are making complex function. So in this complex function, let's look at the small GTP binding protein. The general class of small GTP binding protein can act as a signaling protein and they are activated by GTP ex exchange factor GF and are inactivated by GTPase. They play a major role in actin-based motility low rock TDC42. We already come familiar with that, as well as in membrane trafficking, RFs, RFs labs. Presumably, the binding of a specific wrap to a vesicle will target it for binding to next membrane compart compartment as well. So, this GTP binding protein, they don't have a single row. They have very several row to do something because uh, the, the cell, they utilize this same GTP binding protein for another purpose. Sometimes, they can be used as actin-based motility Sometimes they can use as a um, membrane exocytosis. Okay. So yeah, here subsequent stage of glycoprotein production. So here they just focus on how, depending on temperature, in in low temperature, this uh, ER membrane things they are they are go to the Golgi. And then they are helping for plasma membrane mediated exocytosis, but in high temperature, uh, this uh, Golgi membrane they are incorporated in ER more dynamically. So depending on the temperature, the cell membrane lipid they can be consumed for exocytosis or they can be saved in ER to do something. But as I told you, the Let's say if we focus on exocytosis, exocytosis normally they are mediated by microtuber here. So here microtuber and then these kinase things uh, from the Golgi after making protein, fabricated protein they are secreted from the exocytosis after transportation by microtuber and kinase too. But sometimes cell they can secrete the uh, Ex exosome or cytokine regardless in, in, in absence of the microtubule, which means empty independent secretion. Okay? So if we block empty dependent secretion, which is can major, but in certain certain peer, certain function, the cell they can accelerate empty independent secretion. So total amount of secretion can be same. Okay? So you always think about the this is not one, they, the cell, originally they have not, not only one, but also many alternative pathways to do something. Without that, the cell should be distinct, okay? Because from the revolution stage, the cell always reinforced to have multiple pathways to do something. One path is blocked by some DNA mutation or some other pathway, the other activation should be performed to do something, compensate. So in summary, for us to understand the complex of integrated complex function, the process needs to be broken into steps from the human beings. Then, then a link in the overall process. In the example of class independent exotosis, over 60 different proteins have been mapped to the function and their relative timing at the site is known. The overall process has been divided in seven steps, but it is likely that for the understanding of the process will reveal more steps or at least additional parallel activities. In working out the steps involved in such a function, it is useful to start by considering all of the tasks that must be performed to reach the overall goal and how the cell could possibly accomplish them. Once individual complex functions are understood at a detailed level, and the relations to the other complex function is known in integrated complex function, the normal condition, the process should be further studied in different cell stage and with different physiological perturbation to better understand the mechanism actually involved. So here, they, the author, they mentioned about how we can approach the cell biology, cell function. First, you try to step by, you try to make steps 
one step, second step, third step, and then to try to know which kind of components are there and how they are integrate each other. And then when you block one step, from the reverse engineering, you can know how these steps are involved, how these components are involved, but in your thinking, you have to also consider the alternative step, best way. Yeah. Maybe this content, you already know about that, but they highlight again how you approach the this mechanical biology things. Okay, our final chapter today is uh, chapter four of this semester. Chapter four, they label cells exhibit multiple stage, stage each with different function. Okay, so let's say this this chapter they focus on cell phase a lot. Okay, so analysis of function. An integrated cellular function should be described in the context of the cell phase. Cell phase is very important. Sometimes they stop everything. Sometimes they fabricate DNA, fabricate protein, do something. And the requirement for the function, protein synthesis, is dependent upon cell phase and require mRNA liposome energy and blah, blah, blah. Process. Okay? So first, we have to know, okay, my cell is G0. Well, they are in G1, and then they are ready for something. Let's say after starving the cell, you change the media to FBS, and then now their cell phase is G1, right? And more, more homogeneously, you can analyze your cell, cell function. And then next, okay, we determine my cell, I culture them in G1 phase. And then next level is, in G1 phase, what biological process happened? At next level, each requirement is in turn dependent on the set of the parameter. For example, MR level, depending on synthesis and processing, transport to the cytoplasm and degradation rate, which vary with cell phase. In the cell phase, uh, this protein synthesis, MRI, MRI things, liposome, they are required. And then in this, let's say, MRI level, the biological process, they should change. And then change the MRI level, what should be changed another? MRI synthesis, and then transcription level, a transcription speed, or transport from transportation through the, throughout the nuclear pore. So they are already very different biological process. And then after knowing the biological process, and then you can try to know how the how they are integrate in molecular interaction. For example, phase-dependent change reached to the molecular level, which requires several in iterations of this process. Transport to cytoplasm requires LAN GTP to bind the mature mRNA and facilitate movement through the nuclear pore complex. Further, the nuclear pore complex consists of 100 pair protein to form the fully function. So always you think about, first, uh, which stage your cell G0, G1, or S phase. And then next, which kind of biological process is important for doing the cell G1 phase? Let's say mRNA transcription. And then how mRNA transcription to the protein production, they can occur. And then finally, you try to understand how in molecular interaction, like Sir Yap, Yap-TAS binding, or nuclear pore, inside, outside, or how this uh, MRI is highly accelerated in terms of transcription in the molecular interaction, you can see. So the load of the cell state or phase in cell function. Always you have to think about nature and nurture. Nurture is a little similar to nature in terms of alphabetic manner, but the real meaning is that little artificial incubation. Okay? So example, so in naturally, how your fibroblasts behave in your body. But when you when you culture the cell on our TCP, this is a nurture condition. Okay? So artificial condition. So you always think how my fibroblast behave in oral oral cavity or skin or keloid and then when you you design your in vitro study, how you perfectly mimic nature.
But still, they should be, they come to be nurtured. Because there's not, not 100% perfect condition to mimic the nature, right? But anyhow, you try to mimic it. So example, fibroblast move from the polylysine coated surface to collagen coated surface. They will develop a different composition as new proteins are made over a period of many minutes to hours. Even the collagen thick, the contraction can alter the shape of the collagen, which will in turn alter the mechanical structure of the cell environment and cell composition. So your fibroblasts, when they are culturally, when they are living in the, your human body, what is their perfect ECM structure? ECM stiffness, ECM crystallization, ECM composition. Okay, but in our hands, maybe I, I only. The, the only platform I have it is, let's say, Germa. So you culture them, the fibroblast. But over time, the fibroblast, they naturally secrete the ECM. And then, for, and then they are making their own microenvironment, which more mimic the nature of the fibroblast. Right? So there is why, why many molecular bio, biology scientists, they try to look at something change in very early time point. If over time, your original condition can change by the cell. Okay. So, or you think about cell environment, and then cell secreted or cell nature composition, and then these things they can change the function, and then this function they can change the cell behavior. Cell composition also includes secreted ECM, as well as the membrane lipid composition or metabolism everything. But, and so this or everything they can change depending on the cell phase G0, G1, G2, M, S phase. So okay you have your cell can fill the many phase G0, G1, S, G2 phase but let's say you have the six module but G0 rest phase, all modules turn on. But from the G1, F1 turn on, and then S, F2, F5, G2, F1, F6, and M, other things turning on. Which means, depending on the cell phase, the module on and off, they are totally different, but in that case, they also share some module. Okay, as I told you, the cell have always determined certain module as a multiple function. Oh. Okay, so share the complex function dependent on combination, they have different phase or outcome, even in different cell phase. And cell phase in culture cell. Actually, when you look at the other molecular body paper, they always do like cell line, M N N I H more mouse fibroblast or certain Hella cell, something like. And then why people use a lot of cell line, not primary cell, but primary cell is more, uh, I can say, more mimicking nat natural environment because they are derived from the human patient or right before they are derived. But in terms of homogeneity of the result, the primary cell is very poor. Primary cell, they have very different cell phenotype, and then they are not homogeneous behave. So when they use cell line, you can see more clear or one direction. But we cannot say this feature in cell line perfectly matching to the primary cells. Because cell line, anyhow, they are um, Drive to have homogeneous cell behavior from the continuous cell culture, right? They are sometimes they are artificially immortalized or by immortalized by virus, or sometimes they are automatically immortalized by the continuous subculture. Oh. So cells that are immortalized through multiple passages in a non-comfort phase to select for spontaneous immortalization let's say, three to three procedure, are more closely aligned to their original cell type in terms of active function. However, even these cells do not exhibit a complete array of wild-type cell function. 
The benefit of using cell line is that they can be selected for several functions that have properties similar to the wild type cell. With so many cell phase and so many methods for altering this phase, it is easy to see why there are many seemingly contradictory observations in the literature. Okay? Because some people say this cell, they are stiffly dependent. Some people say not dependent. Even though they are using the same PA as well. Because they are cell culture condition to change the cell phase or their cell type, even though they are using one cell, same cell, number, same cell un, unit name, but uh, how they handling the cell, making the confluency below 70% or making high confluency, that, that can show very significant different phenotype. Okay. So under this context, you try to see how the literature they perform the experiment, and then how you op optically, optimally adapt this platform to your hand. So protein composition and phage behaviors. Okay, let's uh, cell have a limited tool for reaction. So as I told you before, cell share their share cell have limited tool. So one tool can be used as a multiple function. <coughs> to go back to car analog analo analogy, there are many common functions between sedan and four-wheel drive vehicle, and difference are really in a few specialized functions. Further, they will behave similarly on paved loads, but off loads they will behave totally di differently. Similarly, set of different cell types have many common functions, but when faced with specialized environment, can behave remarkably differently because of specialized phase behaviors. So if you cannot see any big difference in this cell type, other cell type, and then maybe you can say, you can feel that your condition is not proper to show the difference of the cell behavior. So somehow they behave differently, but this condition is not perfect condition for making difference. For example, cell practice on the fibronectin will spread rapidly without contraction on the surface, while others will contract almost continually. And there is no known difference in the cell. Hmm. So even the cell have same cell, but some cell, some fibroblasts in fibronectin without contraction they spread, but other same fibroblasts, they can spread with continuous contraction. So let's say analysis of function and cell phase. This is uh, I already mm, mentioned before. Let's say you are talking about microtuber dependent transportation and exocytosis. This secret term, how they are regulated by the protein interaction. When you want to know, you have to do protein mix. And then, from the genetic analysis, genetic point of view, they can affect this secretion. And then, you can do genetic analysis like DNA sequencing or other things. And then, influence of protein outside the function. And then, you can quantify what is the external force, external stimuli, which can affect the secretion. So when you want to know how the secretion is regulated, and then proteomics, genetic analysis, and quantitative analysis, which kind of external force, external factor that can affect, you can see in detail in each module. Okay. So when you think about certain target feature, let's say stiffness can enhance um, inflammation. And then from the proteomics, which kind of uh, amyloid-related protein is highly secreted? You have to analyze. And then genetically, which means actually DNA, they never change. But RNA, they can change. And then how RNA expression, they can be changed by the check by the RNA sequencing or like PCR. And then quantitatively, which, which kind of mechanical transduction component acting microtubule or focal adhesion or cell stiffness, membrane composition, how they are changed. 
you can have to analyze. And then all three should be understood in one part. How they are linking each other. Okay? You always categorize this final outcome and MRNA, MRNA level and then quantitative mechanical transduction pathway and then here we can add epigenetic change as well. So actually we have a four tool to do that. Hmm. Uh, and then one thing is that, you know, the mRNA when they change, sometimes protein level doesn't change. We also already know that microRNA, they are involved. And then recently people say that long non-coding RNA, which is also not functional RNA, but somehow they can act as a microRNA to regulate the mRNA level. So even though you can see mRNA change, but you cannot see the protein level, and then your mechanobiology parameter, somehow they can increase the mRNA transcription, but the other, in other way, they are also affecting the mRNA post-transcription behavior from microRNA or long coding RNA, they are degraded, downregulated, so final protein, they can be similar, okay? So you always think that this is post-transcription, or you always think about they can, you can assess, you can meet the post-transcription phenomenon. This is not very much investigated in mechanical biology in detail, well, in ITN also, we are looking for how post-transcription level they can change, which means mRNA increase, but protein level same. Then how that can happen? How stick, how mechano parameter they can change this post-transcription level, post-transcription post-transcription behavior? So yeah, definition of cell cell fate you already know that. Yeah, but here I want to highlight uh, this graph is very important. Let's say you starve the cell overnight, they are all G0. G0 means uh, synthesis of DNA, nothing. Protein lipid carbohydrate, very minimum. Ion volume, homosynthesis like that. Uh, motility and cell shape change, they are a little bit maintained. But when you change the media with the FBS, Okay, DNA doesn't synthesize because they are G G1 phase. But why is the dramatically change? This circle synthesis of protein, and lipid, and carbohydrate. Okay, they are dramatically change as well as ion channel and volume. But the motility is not to change in terms of this uh, graph. Okay, so when you want to see some dramatic change based on the or um, mechanobiology parameter in G1 phase, and then you always starve the cell, and then check G1. But if you want to see the very early cell adhesion things, but most of the cell, they are, or maybe initial, I'm, I'm not 100% sure what is the time point for saying G0, but maybe up to one or two hour, they can be G0. And then after attaching a little bit, and then when they start to spread, and then when they feel the stiffness, and then they are come to G1. Oh, okay. So depending on which kind of component you are looking for, you have to think about 12-hour seeding, 12-hour starvation, or just right right after one-hour seeding, you start to, to you start to watch the experiment. Okay. So for Making this parameter change, you always think about this graph, okay? And the S phase also, when you look at the S phase, uh, this DNA is synthesized here, but other ion volume and synthesis of the protein, they are most of them going down, but only synthesis of DNA very high. And then G2M, also they are dynamically changed like that. So, so here, you have to, depending on, maybe you always try to see the, your phenomenon in geom phase. Maybe geom phase, maybe this is a basic phase, you have to look at yourself. But when you specifically analyze S phase or G2 and M, and then sometimes this 
phase of cell that can interfere your result. Okay, because your cell, not 100% cell S phase or G2 phase. Some cell G1, some cell G2, some cell S phase. So you are when you see the change of the protein or mRNA, they are overall, so overall average of the all total kind of the cell line. So that's why you consider to starve the cell. Always do the experiment. And then when you look at the analysis of mitosis, yeah. yeah this is some the, your feature, you already know that. Chromatin yeah, decondense first for starting the division of the cell. Okay? So when you culture the cell, so the bacterial biology parameter, they can change the epigenetic change. Let's say decondensation. But also decondensation condensation that can occur in during this mitosis phase. Okay, so when you uh, capture the confocal images, when cell start to divide it, you have to rule out the cell. Okay, you always uh, capture and quantify the cell which doesn't have involved in mitosis phase. And the cell nucleus are divided like two, you have to remove it. Okay. So how the cell make important decision to change the phase? Cell has decision to grow, die, or differentiation are typically not single step process. And cell may need to go through several phases before it can make a critical decision. One way to decision is if then decision that leads the cell to a particular phase. Let's say in the case of matrix dependent fibroblast growth, the differentiated cell will only grow on certain matrix if those matrix are rigid. So when fibroblasts feel they are rigid, and then they start to spread. This is if then decision. Okay? If something meet, cell go. If then. The to understand the matrix dependent growth of fibroblasts, it's very important to understand the step that cell goes through to arrive at the fibroblast growth phase because those steps are key in cancer at a kind of cell. We can start with the cell in suspension where fibroblast will not grow. They will die after a relatively short period of one to two days, although there are many hormones or growth factors. When you culture the fibroblast suspension stage, even though there are a lot of FPS adding anything, but cell will be dead. Okay? That indicates that in vivo circulating growth hormone can activate or predispose the cell to growth respective of the cell immediate microenvironment. However, hormones cannot totally replace the matrix substrate. Okay? Let's say growth factor is enough to live the fibroblast. In that case, the fibroblast, even in cell suspension state, they should alive. But they are really dead, which means the hormones, cytokine is not enough to make fibroblasts survive. In case of fibroblasts, they need matrix to grow or to be alive. Okay? So depending on the cell type, uh, sometimes matrix is a very key factor to make them survive, make them differentiate. But most of the cell we are working in nitrogen, most of the cell are uh, cell ECM dependent ECM dependent cell type. So we can highlight our matrix important importance. Okay. What does the cell need to know about the matrix for growth? Based on the experiment, there appear to be three major criteria that need to be met before a fibroblast can grow on a particular type of extracellular matrix, integrating clustering, and rigid matrix, and sufficient distance between the matrix site, between clustering. Okay? So let's say fibroblast suspension, they will that after two days. But when they are attaching the ECM, what they did, what they did need? ECM type, collagen, fibronectin, laminin, and number two is integrated clustering. They need it. And then they need rigid matrix. Where they are too soft, maybe they'll be dead. And then in the rigid matrix, how the uh, integrin set are clustered, the distance of the integrin set, 
uh, this can be described later in detail. So the cell, they need certain criteria to, for, to spread or to grow. And then when they're spread especially, they have non-isotropic or isotropic spreading. Non-isotropic is biased uh, they are elongated like that. But isotropic, all the direction they are similarly spread. Okay? But here you can imagine cell have similar tension overall. But here, no isotropic manner, they have biased. Sometimes one direction tension. Okay? So here, when they show like that, maybe this cell, this side, this side have different tension. Okay? And then maybe depending on your topology, so cell feel the different tension. So detailed consideration of suspension phase and transition to spreading. A major change in cell phase is observed when suspended cells ad adhere to a surface and begin to spread out. Okay? Interestingly, matrix protein can still activate suspended cells. And this occurs when cells encounter high local concentration of matrix molecule. When you culture the cell fibroblast in suspension, you can add fibronectin or collagen. Right? And then they can activate the cell. This is true. However, if the matrix molecules are soluble, okay, not firmly attached on the bottom or close linking each other, or even small soluble aggregate, they will not support forces to will enable cell growth. Okay? You, when you culture the fibroblast in media suspension and adding the fibronectin collagen, two days later they will die. Okay, why? The fibroblast actually they need ECM as well as force to grow. Oh. After touching the ECM and then using ectomycin contraction, they, when they feel the force and then they have power to be survived and then power to grow. Okay? So which means that the other dependent cell, their key factor to do something is not only ECM but also power. They have to feel the power. Power means power uh, derived from the substrate. Okay? So this is a very key experiment to understand the total biology. Bottom line, you need fibroblasts in, in integrating and actin formation, from actin formation, contraction force for generative force, and then now they are ready for going G1 phase for other cell. Or they can be survived for a long time. Okay. Mm. Okay, this, this one I can skip it. For next mm. here. So let's imagine in terms of the mm, integrating set. Actually, integrate alpha, beta, but they always have a set. Set and then integrating should be clustered. Okay? When integrating is clustered in the molecular level, people think that integrating is also very rigid molecule. Rigid means they are they have all their 3D structure. This is called rigid. But when they are flexible, like uh, elast uh, when they have elastic structure a lot, they are flexible. But integrating, uh, they have fixed 3D structure. In that case, uh, when they are stick together, they have low entropic penalty, which means high entropy. High entropy, high entropy means they are more easy to drive it, right? So why integrating sets are clustered? In terms of energy point of view, this is more uh, energy, energetically satisfactory from the physics. Okay? So entropy increase. Ah. Entropy increase? En entropy increase in ECM integrating binding, which means Decrease of entropy penalty. Yeah. 
always entropy going to the going to drive in increasing manner, right? All the how can I say randomness is increasing in our body. They always try to do that. This is nature nature naturally happen. But if you go back to from the random thing to the order thing, you need energy to fix it. Okay? So as I as they mentioned that integrity set clustering is not much energy dependent manner. They are naturally happen because this is their uh, more in entropy increasing phenomenon. Okay? But sometimes in cell, when they need energy, which means this is not happy. They need they have they have to consume the energy to go back to the um, non-entropy increase non-entropy -enter increase phenomenon. Okay. So here they again the two different modes of spreading constitute two different phases. In the spreading phase, they often display two different modes: non-isotropic, isotropic. Okay. In non-isotropic, they will spread limited area 360 seconds and then stop to test the matrix using actomized contraction before spreading. But in the isotropic mode, they will spread rapidly on the surface for longer period without testing. For example, this is the same fibroblast, but some fibroblast, they should like spread, check, spread, check, spread, check, spread, check, like this kind of thing. But here, isotropic, when they're spreading, they continuously spread, okay, without this stepwise manner, okay? So integrins are active in this non-isotropic mode and not in the isotropic. In the non-isotropic mode, the cell stops spreading and periodically tests the cell ECM. So here they said why the cell, same cell have sometimes isotropic, sometimes isotropic behavior. They didn't reveal in detail why they have these two modes. But um, in an anisotropic manner, spreading, the integrity is key. But isotropic manner, integrity doesn't use for them much. I'm not using for them much. So cell have this kind of two spreading phenotype. Anisotropic, isotropic. Anisotropic is more internally dependent because they have to test the ECM stiffness. So as I told you, uh, even the integrin, the ECM binding site have similar area as a module, but depending on how they are dispersed, distance each other, 10 micrometer, 50 micrometer, relatively happy, but 20 micrometer, not happy that much for spreading, 25, the cell cannot spread, okay? Which means depending on the distance of the ECM, cell, sometimes they can happily recognize it and spread, so but sometimes they are, they are not making the integrating clustering plus active formation for spreading. So uh, they li limit that up to 50 micrometer. It's believed that more separated adjacent site correlate with a large pores because a greater number of the biopolar myosin filament can assemble between the sites. So which means that um, uh, up to this, compared to 10, 15, distance, they can make more spreading because they can induce more power to generate. So 5, 10, 15, one direction correlation. But after that, some, some, after certain threshold, the cell cannot spread anymore. Okay? So in here, once isotropic spreading cell reach about two-thirds of their finer spread area, they will test the rigidity of the substrate as the non-isotropic cell to continuously. So they didn't know, but one sometimes one cell, if, even fibroblast, same fibroblast, 
they are doing isotropic spreading. Maybe let's say 20% isotropic spreading, but after two thirds of the spreading, and then now they change their mode to the non isotropic spreading. Okay? So when you look at the cell, fibroblasts, uh, some cells are initially very um, homogeneously round, but some cells, from the initially, they are very elongated. You can see this kind of change of the cell. But the scientists, they didn't find why this happened, even though they have same DNA or same mRNA expression. But it happened. The regional specialization in cell can involve phase change. We see in spreading cell that some regions of edge will spread in iso isotropic mode, while all just regions are non-isotropic. So first paper they mentioned from the 10, 100 cell, 20% cell isotropic, that 80% cell non-isotropic. But when you look at in detail, de depending on the region in single cell, some spreading area is non-isotropic, some area is, not, is isotropic. Okay? In cell, in, in same cell, depending on the region, the spreading phenomenon is different. Okay? And then many interviews complex cell function involve multiple cell phase. Normally, propagation of fibroblasts in vitro doesn't involve special treatment of the tissue, culture, plastic surface. Yet, the cells still grow and have similar shapes to those plate of the coated surface after a similar time. When cultured for hours or even days, fibroblasts can express and secrete their own fibronectin and collagen, meaning the requirement of fibroagro environment will still be assembled. So here, as I told you before, the fibroblast, the cell, they make their own favorable microenvironment over time. Okay, so you can keep that in mind. As a summary, studying cell in the same cell phase will make progress on understanding the functional activity much easier. Okay, so please consider type of the cell while only addition time, depending on your context of experiment. If phase and transition between them can be controlled as in the case of the G0 to G1, then it is possible to sort out the functions that are critical for one phase versus the other. If phase can be controlled as the case of G0 to G1, you can sort out the functions that are critical for one phase versus the other. Okay, when you are starved the cell, you check the stiffness depends on something, but doesn't change. But when you change the media to FBS, you can observe some change. This you can say that um, cell phase dependent manner, manner, okay? Or when you see the similar tendency, you can say this feature the outcome is cell phase non-dependent manner between G0 and G1. So actually, not many good, not many paper in high impact journal about the G0 and G1 phase, but in our body, uh, maybe most of the fraction is in G0, and the other fraction is G1, right? But in regenerative phase, always G1 is dominant. But in normal phase, maybe G0 is, can be major portion. So you always think about how G0, G1 phase, you can control it and observe your feature in your hand. Okay, any question? Yeah, it is very, actually when I read this textbook, sometimes the title and the content is not match 100% from my understanding, but I try to deliver the major key point. As a key point continuously they mentioned that a uh, very in specific manner, uh, so you try to categorize how the cell behave, depending, in the, depending on the cell type, they can change. In same, in same cell type, also, somehow, they can change. And in single cell, somehow, depending on the region, they can change. But they didn't know why they happen. But they, cons they uh, assume that any uh, cell phase is very important for regulating this phenomenon. And then, fr uh, from the development of the mechanical biology field, we can understand better and better. Uh, this is their key 
message. Okay, thank you.